welcome to a tour of NC State University. We're going to be kicking things off at the intersection between Hillsborough Street and Brooks Avenue, aka the most northwest part of NC State's campus, I guess. I'll get into more of what exactly is on Hillsborough Street later because that is kind of like the main happening street at NC State. But if you wanted to go further back that way, the main thing you're going to find is a bunch of student apartments that mainly upperclassmen stay in, such as Valentine Commons and University Towers as well as just the typical shops and restaurants and all that. Right on that intersection, this building behind me over here is called Nelson Hall. Nelson Hall is a pretty big class building at, uh, at State and that is mainly because it houses the Pool College of Management, which is NC State's primary like business major. So if you're a business major, you're gonna have a lot of classes in here and club meetings and all that kind of stuff. And I guess it's just the administrative building for that major as well. Moving past Nelson Hall, which was that one, we reach our first kind of grass field. I'm not really sure if this one has a name, but it's a nice small little area. It has a cool looking gate in the front, but more importantly, surrounding it are like four or five buildings. And the main theme with all of these is that they are related to sciences slash labs. So I think that one right there is called Fox. I've been in it before. It's a really nice building. I'm not sure if it's new or not, but it has a lot of study spaces in front, but then once you get to the main part of the building, it's a bunch of labs and rooms for research, and I suspect that's the same thing with the rest of these. I believe that one over there is called David Clark. That one is called Kilgore. I think that's more for like ecology. I'm not too sure. And then there are some other like bio ones right next to Fox. But yeah, if you're majoring in any of those things or doing any sort of scientific research, you'll probably be in this part of campus a lot. As we move past that area, I am still surrounded by a whole bunch of buildings. All of these look like pretty standard class buildings. They're ones like Boston, Gardner, Scott, Williams. All of those I'm passing right now. I think most of those are going to be related to the sciences in some way, but you might even still have general classes in there. I guess my state friends have told me that. Just keep in mind that you're going to usually have at least one class on this side of campus. But as we cross that, oh, I just stepped in a... I don't even know what fruit that is. Whatever grows in that tree, that's actually kind of cool that they have those kind of trees right here. But back to my point, past that we are going to be entering the Brickyard, which is one of the most beautiful parts of State's campus in my opinion. Take a look. Um, on the south side you are still going to be surrounded by a bunch of those other types of buildings that usually have a bunch of classrooms and labs and all that. I think these ones are like Dabney, Cox, Broughton those buildings and this is actually like pretty close to the center of main campus so if you have a class here it shouldn't be too far of a walk but the main thing next to the brickyard is on the north side and that is going to be hill library you're probably going to be spending a lot of time here if you live on this side of campus which most likely will be in freshman year hill is the main might even be the only library on this side i, I think it's 10 floors uh all the book stacks over there however it's not just the library right here i don't know if you can tell but those are actually like dining seats right there because this is where the atrium is. The atrium is sort of where you're going to be getting your meals that aren't dining hall meals if that makes sense but you can still use your meal plans. So I know there's like a mini Chick-fil-A in there. There's a random pizza place. I'm not saying these are good. I've heard that they're not that good but there's a few different places in there that you can buy whenever you're right here uh, and that's pretty convenient in my opinion being right on top or right underneath a library. The inside of Hill Library is honestly really impressive, especially the area that you're seeing right now, which is what they renovated in the summer of 2021. Really good job by State on that. It puts it at almost hunt or tally level in my opinion, which I'll get to both of those later. Those are pretty high standards, so yeah, pretty solid place to do work either with people or just by yourself. Right next to the brickyard, they have a pretty unique but also cool and very random sculpture. You might have seen a TikTok about these because I think there was one that got quite a few hundred thousand views. But pretty much the idea is that if you sit in one of them and you say something, the person in the other can hear it. So I guess just some cool science there. Uh, NC State is showing off what they're known for. <laughs> Past the brickyard, you're gonna see a little arboretum over there with a couple of more class buildings surrounding it. So before we get too deep into campus, I wanted to pop out for a bit and show you guys Hillsborough Street, which a little bit of it is technically on campus, but I think most of it isn't. But pretty much Hillsborough Street is where you're gonna find a bunch of fast food chains, sit down places, local places, banks, there's a Wells Fargo there clubs all that kind of stuff and there's also a target right behind me that target is as you may guess a bit overpriced but it is super convenient if you like live like right here and you need to get something and this is where you're most likely going to be coming if you 
don't want your dining hall dinner. Want to eat something a bit nicer or, or do any of the other things I just mentioned. Also, it is not as crowded right now as it usually is during the school year. Actually, there are also a couple of class buildings down on this side of Hillsborough Street, so there is a chance that you are going to have to elongate for a class, which isn't a bad thing, actually. You can just get lunch here and go to class. I don't know, but yeah, just be aware of that. It's literally so painful to see so many people paying for street parking on Hillsborough when there's literally a lot right there that's free after 5 p.m. that no one's in. Little pro tip if you're going to have a car here. Going back into campus from Hillsborough, there are a few more class slash department buildings. I'm not gonna go over each of them because that would take way too long. But the main thing that I wanna show you is that we are about to enter the Court of North Carolina, which is the fancy term for this huge grass field. It is a very pretty grass field though. I've never seen this so empty. I've only been here like twice, but both times it was full of people like having picnics and just doing work, sitting on blankets and stuff over here. So definitely use this area for that. And it is surrounded once again by a few different of those standard buildings. Actually quite a bit if you can see there. But um, yeah, these ones are like Poe Hall, Leaser Hall, Caldwell Hall. So you might have a nice view during one of your classes. I don't know. One thing that you'll notice, an interesting part of the structure of this campus, is that we haven't passed one dorm slash residence hall yet. There's like none on this north part of campus. We're gonna pass one soon, but I just thought I'd point that out because that's really weird to me. But, but the main thing that I wanted to show you on this north side of campus before we start moving to central is on the very northeastern tip of it, and it is going to be NC State's Memorial Bell Tower. This has actually been under construction for like a good year year and a half but it did open back up a few months ago and it looks really nice it towers over this whole like corner of campus but i really like how it looks the whole gray color and all that i think it's very fitting for nc state and it is right next to hillsborough and pullen road i want to say walking down pullen road now we're about to hit the college of design which is, i guess who that belongs to but look at the entrance to their to their department hall it's called brooks hall and look at that that's probably the fanciest one at NC State. It's like full white marble. But yeah, this is Pullen Road. Um, to my left, it's just a bunch of grassy areas. Plus, there's like a few baseball fields. I assume that's where the team practices. Circling back in from, from Pullen Road, uh, we finally passed our first residence halls. What Tauga is a little back there. This is Gold. This is Welch. Sim is right in front of me. There's a little nice picnic area right there. Um, this is on the very east side of Central Campus, so it's not a great location. We are now turning right onto Dunn Avenue. This is where I guess Thompson Hall is. I didn't I didn't know that was here. But it is NC State's like performing arts theater, which is neat. More importantly, this is where the actual honors college dorms are. My friend actually stayed in one last year. It was this one, Becton. It's pretty much the same location as the other ones we talked about. Not the worst, but not amazing for sure. Past those, you're gonna see one of the entrances to Coliseum parking deck, which is the main deck in the center of campus. And yeah, let me tell you, if you don't have a permit, it's expensive to pay here during the day. It is quite massive though. But we are on Kate's Avenue now. I just passed a dining hall, the first of the three at State. I've heard it's the worst one, but don't take my word for it. It's called Clark Dining Hall. That's back there. To my left is NC State's track and soccer field. And then to the right of the soccer field is NC State's softball stadium. But now we are really going to start entering the main, main parts of campus. You just saw me pass Case Dining Hall, which is the second dining hall. It's actually really good. I've been inside of it once, but it's actually meant to be the athlete dining hall. But they do open it up to regular students for lunch and breakfast on weekdays, I think. Yeah, definitely try it out and know where that is. Behind me right here is going to be Reynolds Coliseum, which is where women's basketball plays, I believe. But now, uh, still going down Kate's. We are going to pass the two probably biggest and coolest looking buildings on NC State's campus. Tally Student Union, which I have raved about on this channel before, and Carmichael Gym, which I have not yet had a chance to rave about, but I will do so right now. This glass part up here just got renovated last year, so I've been in it once. It is so nice. There's like a whole turf and everything. I don't think I'm allowed to go in now because I don't have a student ID. But yeah, this is the one and only gym at State, but that's because it is massive. It is like insane the amount of stuff that's inside there's rock climbing there's basketball there's there's badminton there's everything you can think of uh somewhere in this gym the, i see people doing weights down there cardio up there it has everything and tally is as beautiful and nice looking on the inside as it is on the outside i mean just look at that 
this is obviously the main student union at NC State, so there's tables everywhere for you to sit down, eat, do work, whatever. Uh, behind me, there's a Wolfpack Outfitters, which is like NC State's merch store, and a Howling Cow ice cream in there. There's a Howling Cow there, which is like NC State's signature ice cream place. You probably know that if you're going here. But that's right here, as well as a few more small restaurants down the line. There's like a Jason's Deli, a Tuffy's, that kind of stuff. It's just like your quick on-campus food that you're gonna get that you can use your meal credits on, but you can also pay for them. Like even the elevators are pretty sick. Obviously right now, like I've said, it's a Friday evening in the summer, so no one's here. But during your regular school year, this place is absolutely packed. But for good reason, it is super nice. Pretty much every section of it. And if you go here, you're gonna be spending a lot of time in Tally. The spire here on the north side of it is equally as cool as everything else. Every time I walk in Tally, the more I wish something like this was at UNC. And then outside, I almost freaking tripped on those. Outside Tally uh, to the north side, this is how it looks. And it's another pretty common area for people to gather. Moving on past Tally. We are going to be reaching a lot of the dorms and this is where majority freshmen stay. So pay attention. To my left, we have Turlington and Alexander. I think both of those are regular hall style dorms. And then past those, you're gonna reach the Tri Tower dorms, which is these three right here. There's two more behind it. These are gonna be Carroll Hall, Metcalf Hall, and Bowen Hall. But before I show you guys the other side of that, there's one pretty important part of campus that I haven't showed you yet. And that is the Freedom of Expression Tunnel. There's a pretty high chance you've seen this before, but if you don't know what it is, the name is pretty self-explanatory. It's just an entire tunnel where people can spray paint pretty much anything that you want on there. Be warned, there's a lot of stuff on there, but there is also a lot of really cool art. Like, look at that. Yeah, its location is also like a pretty nice path to get from Central to North Campus, so it's convenient too and it is super cool to just walk through every now and then and see what people are talking about or drawing up, I guess. Except at like 4 a.m. I would, I would avoid going in there alone at 4 a.m. But yeah, back at the Tri Towers, here's a better view of all three of them. There's Carol, Metcalf, and Bowen. And yeah, all three of these are 10 stories, regular suite style, so a whole lot of people living in here. It is a really nice location because it's right next to Tally, pretty much. However, it might be a bit longer of a walk to classes, but still pretty good location. I've heard the actual rooms are iffy though. Behind the Tri Towers over on this side, you have two more dorms. Tucker and Owen is right there adjacent to it. There's a nice little volleyball net right there. And I've actually heard the people who live in Tucker and the people who live in Owen compete in like a volleyball competition every year to see who like owns that center space, which I thought was really cool. And yeah, I believe both of those are hall style as well though. Past Tucker, we're on Kate's again. You're gonna hit Witherspoon, which is a student center that has a few different things in it. Obviously not the scale as Tally, but it's also a class building. I know a friend who had like geology or some class like that in here. And right in front of it, there's also this like little beach thing. It looks pretty deformed right now, as you can tell, but during their year, it actually is fully covered with sand. They have like beach chairs and umbrellas and stuff. It's just like a mini little beach out in the middle of campus with no water. I really don't know what the point is, but I guess it's cool. On the other side of that is going to be this building over here, which I think is like NC State's Campus Health slash Students Health Center. So if you ever get sick on campus, that's probably where you're gonna go. But right across from both of those two, this is a pretty important building, is gonna be Berga Residence Hall. You can't really see it's covered by trees right now, but this is the biggest, I think, freshman dorm at NC State. Uh, it's sweet style. The rooms are bigger than the Tri Tower. Well, honestly, it's your traditional dorm, so if you want that classic freshman experience at State, Berga is going to be your way to go. I think freshmen are allowed to park here, but it's pretty hard to get a permit. Like, you have to get really lucky. But yeah, this is the other side of it. You can kind of see, but this is where the entrances to all the rooms are and the balconies uh, in front of them. One of the perks of living in Berga is, I think, the main dining hall at NC State Fountain, which is right there is right next to it so if you want to eat you can literally walk like 30 seconds and you're there fountain itself is like i said pretty standard dining hall uh, i've had it before i'd say it's slightly above average in terms of the food but inside is going to be really crowded there on weekday evenings and it's another place where you're going to be spending a lot of time next to Berga, on the very west part of central campus you can have the two final dorms over here lee which is right there and sullivan which is right there they're both also suite style, but I think the rooms are a bit smaller than Berga, and their location is pretty decent. Not the worst, not the best. 
and the only thing that's going to be further west on central campus than those two dorms is going to be the baseball stadium so that's going to wrap it up for the north and central campus part of the tour i made it back to where i started nelson hall is right over there and dan allen parking deck is right here which is where i parked <laughs> I was so confused if they were yelling at me, but yeah, Centennial Campus is coming up next. Okay, we drove over seven minutes to Centennial Campus, which is the main campus for textiles and engineering at NC State. I'm with my friend Rohith, who is a engineering major at NC State, so he knows these buildings more than I do. And so we're just gonna walk around. It's obviously smaller than main campus, but still super cool. Right now, I am in front of the oval is what it's called. This is actually a fun fact where the bus from UNC drops off. We just crossed through there. Um, that building is engineering building two. EB2, what's in EB2? Other so it's it houses electrical and computer engineering as well as the makerspace for engineering. Yeah, so the, we went inside the makerspaces. They were really cool. Uh, if you're an engineering ma major here, you're probably gonna spend a lot of time there. But yeah, now we are in front of pretty much the entire Centennial campus and around it, is like three engineering buildings as well as the famous Hunt Library and I think like a few student apartments. So engineering building one is apparently the chemical main building on Centennial. So you're just gonna find what, like labs and another bunch of classrooms for, for chemistry? Chemical and biomedical engineering. So that's what that building's for. We can't go in because, I mean, none of us are biomed majors at state. <laughs> Uh, and all of these buildings have like card access and then directly across from that one So that one right there looks pretty much exactly the same But it is the same thing but except for aerospace and mechanical engineering However right next to that building they do have this like neat little plane thing It's a real plane that apparently a student from the school has flown before which is so cool So this next building which is in front of the three that we just saw is obviously a bit more modern and that is because it was literally just finished being built last year and i remember coming here a bunch during freshman year and there would always be construction there but now it's done it's called fitzwillard hall and it is mainly for civil industrial construction and construction and on the inside there's just a bunch of like different study spaces a bunch of classrooms of course a huge lab with a bunch of like what looks to be really high-tech equipment. So all of the classrooms in this building, I've noticed they all kind of look different from one another, but they're all like really cool still. So this seems like a great building to have either a class in or do work in. Yeah. Also, apparently, say what you just said. So the glass can be made one-sided. So students can see from outside what the students inside are doing, but not vice versa. I'm comparing that to like Murray Hall at UNC right now and yeah and this is the view from one of the balconies slash exits nice look over the the textile part of centennial campus but before we get there we got two more places to show on this side across from fitzwillard hall is another thing called the oval and this one if you go inside has a few different food places that you can order from with the meal plan or just by paying uh, and above it is one of the buildings that are a part of Wolf Ridge Apartments. So these are all apartment buildings above the Oval Food Hall. And there's also a Wolfpack Outfitters right there. But yeah, this is a really convenient place to have your apartment if you have a bunch of classes on Centennial. This whole Wolf Ridge Apartment Complex is like way bigger than I thought it was from just that front part at the Oval. And then past all that, at the very end of Centennial Engineering Campus, we have, I guess, what is probably considered one of the main hallmarks of NC State now, Hunt Library. If you've never seen it before, um, I'm about to go in Hunt because it's so nice. A lot of people that don't even have classes on Centennial or are engineering majors still come here to work. One of the most famous parts of Hunt is their colored stairs, which you're going to see are present throughout this entire building. Second floor. They got like all sorts of random production, different types of rooms here. Like behind me, it's like a media production room. There's like a music recording room. A couple doors down, there's a game room with little PS4 and Xbox. Like this place is insane. And it's also so weird seeing it completely empty right now. Like this never happens. Also, you gotta love their chairs. Fourth floor, which is the top floor, which it looks like they're doing some construction or something. I mean, this entire reading room in general is like on a different level 
Look at that view. There's a balcony out there. I don't think I'm gonna get locked out. I hope I don't. But yeah, look at this. Like, come on, does this look like it's the top of a library to you? Definitely not, but it is. Oh, I wish the UNC library had this. I know I've gone on a lot about the positives of Hunt. There are some negatives. Honestly, with how crowded it is, it sometimes becomes distracting to do work. And also the fact that it's all the way down here makes it a hassle to come to if you're on the main part of campus. But at the end of the day, I mean, you cannot really complain about Hunt Library. But wait, I actually haven't mentioned like the main part of a library, which is books. You search for a book here. And then it just goes and grabs it. Like, who needs book stacks anymore, am I right? But actually, this was built in like 2014, 2013, so it's not even that new. And then the final part of this tour, other main part of Centennial, which is the textiles complex, which is where a lot of the classes and resources and everything for textiles majors are, which is a relatively popular major at, at NC State, I think. It's one of the best in the nation for textiles. The main building is locked right now, unfortunately, but I did see a Port City Java from the outside. There's a bunch of random tables and desks, obviously your, your typical stuff. And I assume on the top there's classrooms and all of that. And then outside it is this pretty nice view. Um, the building actually extends really far back. I, I don't know what's what's all in there. There's also this like really nice looking bridge at the very end of the textiles campus. There's more research buildings at the end, but this is a nice little touch. Actually, I lied. The very end of Centennial Campus actually has this building, which is what Rohit calls the MRC. MRC, yes sir. The MRC, which is apparently just this massive research building that a lot of professors will go to to do their research or grad students or whatever. It looks pretty interesting. <laughs> But yeah, that is going to do it for this tour of NC State University. Drop a like if you found this helpful. Big shout out to Rohit for helping me understand Centennial and everything. It is a nice campus. It's overall more modern than UNC, especially on this side. I still prefer UNC structure a little bit. But yeah, that's going to do it for this one. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you later. Peace out.